and Alabama Town had scored an important win after the city council teamed up with the police department to attempt to use them as a cash cow. Now, AL.com reports the police department in the city of Castleberry, Alabama, had been having a bit of a cash crunch. Turns out revenue from speeding tickets had decreased over the years thanks to an influx of safer driving. Well, wonderful. That's the good news. That means more people are driving safely. That's actually what you want. That's the whole point of the speeding ticket system. You give them a ticket so that they don't actually do that. But no, the police officers, the police department in Castleberry, like a lot of police departments across the nation, are actually using these fees like they depend on these fees now as a way to generate revenue to, co- to keep their police uh, station running, which is not a good thing. Now, it's, of course, like I said, when you have declining revenue because of less people getting caught, that's not good for the police department. So they actually did something about it, and it was not good. Here's what they did. Quote, what the department, uh, what the department would do is impound vehicles they pulled over using the state's civil asset forfeiture law, which allows them to keep 100% of the items taken by police. The claim would be that there would be a suspicion of drugs or basically anything that they can come up with. So if they have a suspicion or if they make something up, like, I don't know, that car looks like somebody uh, that was doing drugs, right? Belongs to somebody that uh, we think is doing drugs or dealing drugs. Better go take that car. Or that looks a little too new, that vehicle right there. We're going to pull them over and see if they didn't, if they got that money from dealing drugs. Even if we don't find any drugs in the car. This is horrible, right? Now, the, the owners of those vehicles were required to pay a $500 impound fee to the police. Now, for a lot of people, that's simply unaffordable. I, look, I, I don't know a lot of people who, who could handle a $500 fine, especially for doing nothing. Now, it gets worse. Thanks to the influx of money, the town hired officers and had worked with a judge to maintain the program. Those new officers that were hired often dressed in camouflage that was tucked into combat boots. So basically, they had their officers looking like armed thugs. And that's unfortunately exactly what they are. Armed thugs from the police department that were basically looking for any sort of reason they could to try to shake you down. And they had a judge in their pocket. Again, this is grotesque. One alleged victim was Troy Crozier, or I'm sorry, Trey Crozier, who lost about uh, $1,700 to the Castleberry Police Department. Another had claimed that police had stole $3,800 from her vehicle because they said that the cash was, quote, obviously part of proceeds from an illegal drug dealing or activity without any evidence by the way and again that's how civil asset forfeiture works there's no evidence so they can go and they can take your $3,800 well we think it was part of a drug deal and so we're just going to take your money and we're going to take your car and charge you 500 bucks to get it out ha ha and what can you do about it we're the law now This person claims that she still does not have her car back, but also found, and this is the kicker, that there was actually no record of a civil forfeiture request even being filed. Understand what that means. So they stole her money, and they stole her car, and they didn't didn't even file the paperwork. And apparently that was, just the fact that you could do this if you file paperwork is bad enough. But the fact that they were so corrupt, they tried to hide behind this law without actually even following the law. That's even worse. And what makes it more damning is that all of the belongings and alleged drugs that were seized by police have not been located in an investigation that is looking into this. Now, the total amount that they uh, took was actually relatively small because it's a relatively small town, uh, but it's estimated about $5,500. So that's how much this, uh, this corruption, this corrupt police outfit department 
had actually taken. Now, there is some good news here, right? So when this small town, they found out that their cops were basically highwaymen, uh, they were so furious that they removed the mayor, J.B. Jackson. They booted him from office. He's gone. A municipal court, uh, uh, court judge sorry, and prosecutor were also ousted, and the police chief, chief uh, Tracy Hawsey, was forced to resign in February. So now uh, Jackson, J.B. Jackson, who came up with this idea, uh, actually spoke to AL.com, uh, and he says, we didn't have much, so Hawsey comes to me and said, there's a lot of crime in this town and had a lot of drugs coming through this town. So he said, why don't we set up a court system to get some money coming in? So... Basically, he's saying, it's the police officer, and I just went along with it. He said, quote, we hired our own DA and our, and our own judge. Then the revenues started to grow, and we built out the police department. And in doing so, a lot of these officers, these thugs, were actually allowed to benefit as well. At least five police officers were paid more than five times the nation's per capita average for being a police officer. So they were getting paid very, very handsomely in order to shake regular people down for money. And Jackson, of course, never denied that was, that was the entire purpose. It was set up to garner money and turn the department into a policing for profit scheme. So this is gross. <laughs> it's disgusting and clearly a criminal operation using the shield of the law. It's situations like this where people wonder, who actually polices the police? And this is another reason why people do not trust cops. Now, are all cops corrupt? No, of course not. But there are a lot of those out there that will actually use their power to try and take advantage of regular people. We saw that in Ferguson, where they essentially did almost the same thing. They would arrest, and they would go in, and they would intentionally police minority areas and try to hit them for anything that they could in order to make more money for the department. They wouldn't go after the white neighborhoods. And let me guess, Alabama, small town, very, very likely that this was a minority area. So, yes, there are police officers and there are police departments that do take advantage of people. And we have to watch out for that. And we have to challenge them and, and call them out for their corruption and get them removed. It kind of, you know, makes me think of other corrupt politicians that we should also remove. For example, the Congress people that just robbed us on a tax bill. They need to be held accountable as well. And thankfully, in this town, they decided to band together to get rid of their corrupt officials. And if they can do it, I think that gives us a lot of hope as well, that we can do it too. Hey, everybody, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.